Welcome to the Thoracic Radiation Education Program. You are viewing this video because you are undergoing radiation to the chest or esophagus. If you are participating in a radiation therapy education class, personal information may be shared by attendees. Because this information is sensitive, only share what you are comfortable with others knowing. We will review the basics of radiation therapy. This video will also explain potential side effects and how to manage them. You may receive additional tips, handouts, and other helpful resources. A member of your healthcare team will answer questions at the end of this presentation. Your healthcare team can provide you with a number of handouts, including a copy of this presentation. We will first discuss what radiation therapy is, including how it is planned and delivered. Radiation therapy is the use of high-energy x-rays to treat cancer. Radiation kills cancer cells by damaging their DNA. In certain cases, radiation can be combined with chemotherapy and other types of cancer treatments. You will first have a treatment planning session called a simulation. During the simulation, we will ask you to lay in a certain position while we take a CT scan. Next, your doctor and his or her team will use the scan to create your individual radiation plan. The planning process can take one to two weeks. External beam radiation is delivered by a machine called a linear accelerator and is delivered from outside of the body. You will not feel the radiation beams. Regular x-rays or CT scans may be taken before your radiation to make sure you are aligned properly to the treatment table. These images do not tell us if the radiation is working. Your daily treatment should take about 20 to 30 minutes total. The beam is on for only a few minutes. Treatment is typically delivered daily on weekdays. Treatment courses vary in length, but are often multiple weeks long. You will be scheduled to see your radiation doctor usually once per week. If you are receiving chemotherapy, your medical oncologist will see you separately in their clinic. We encourage patients to call or come by the radiation clinic Monday through Friday with questions or concerns. Please submit non-urgent questions and refill requests through my chart. These questions should be answered within two business days. The main clinic phone number is provided here. For after-hour emergencies, call the hospital operator or 911. In this section, we will discuss possible side effects of radiation. Radiation causes side effects because the radiation beams pass through normal tissue to reach the tumor. The high-dose radiation, shown by the blue line, surrounds the tumor, but lower-dose radiation, shown in purple, orange, and green lines, also affect some of your normal tissues nearby. Side effects are caused by the dose to the normal tissues. Before we talk about side effects, keep in mind that every patient is different. People have different reactions to radiation therapy. Radiation causes side effects based on the area of the body being treated. Most side effects are temporary and manageable. We will review the most common side effects that relate to radiation in the chest. Serious but rare side effects will also be discussed to help you know when to seek urgent medical attention. We will not review long-term side effects. Questions about possible long-term side effects should be discussed with your doctor. Most acute side effects happen after the first one to two weeks of treatment. Side effects slowly develop as treatment goes on and will be the worst at the end. Symptoms may persist for one to two weeks after treatment before they start to improve. Fatigue can happen for a variety of reasons, including radiation treatment, chemotherapy, travel, changes in diet, and more. Most patients have some level of fatigue by the end of treatment. We recommend balancing rest with mild physical activity as tolerated. You may develop dry skin in the area being treated, Occasionally, this will become pink or red like a moderate sunburn. We will recommend lotions if this happens during treatment. It is important that your skin is clean for treatment. Do not apply any topical cream or lotion before radiation treatment. 
Esophagitis means inflammation of the esophagus. Symptoms may feel like a sore throat and or heartburn, as well as pain with eating. Chemotherapy may worsen these symptoms. Symptoms usually begin around the third week of treatment and may start out as a sensation that food is sticking in your esophagus when eating. It is important to tell your doctor if you have signs of esophagitis, as this can lead to weight loss, fatigue, dehydration, and in some cases, hospitalization if not addressed. Modifying your diet may help relieve esophagitis. Be cautious when eating acidic and spicy foods. These include citrus foods, foods made with tomatoes, and crunchy foods like chips and nuts. These foods can irritate the esophagus and may worsen soreness. Common medicines can help ease symptoms of esophagitis. Antacid medicines are used to prevent acid reflux, which can cause pain. Xyloxylin is a compounded medicine that coats and numbs the esophagus temporarily. Patients often use it as needed before mealtime. Opioid pain medicine is stronger than over-the-counter pain relievers. Opioids are often prescribed if pain is severe and weight loss is an issue. This will help with eating and drinking. Radiation occasionally causes nausea. Taking chemotherapy in combination with radiation may lead to nausea and vomiting. If you do develop nausea, it is important to tell your healthcare team. Your doctor can prescribe medicines to reduce your symptoms and help you stay hydrated. Some medicines used to treat nausea include ondansetron and compazine and may be prescribed by your doctor. Nausea, poor appetite, and or esophagitis can lead to weight loss and or dehydration. It is important to maintain your normal weight during treatment so that you can recover quickly from side effects. You will see a dietitian weekly to help manage any weight loss. You may modify your diet and include more shakes or liquid supplements such as Boost to help maintain your weight. If pain when eating or drinking is an issue, you may take pain medicine to help ease discomfort. Very rarely, patients require IV fluids or a temporary feeding tube due to severe weight loss and dehydration. Constipation is not a side effect from radiation. It is most often caused by dehydration or medicines for pain or nausea. It is best to prevent possible constipation. If you take opioid pain medicine or nausea medicine, ask your doctor about stool softeners and laxatives. For current smokers, all side effects of radiation may be worsened, last longer, and recovery may be more difficult. Please speak to your doctor about smoking cessation and ask for a referral to our Tobacco Cessation Treatment Program. Here, we discuss a few more things to keep in mind after radiation treatment is over. Pneumonitis is a rare side effect. It is inflammation in the lungs that may develop after treatment. Pneumonitis risk is highest a few months to a year after radiation. Symptoms can seem like pneumonia, but there is no infection. These can include cough, shortness of breath, and low-grade fever. Contact your radiation doctor if any of these symptoms develop after treatment. As mentioned earlier, the marks on your skin and the imaging scans before treatment only verify your position during treatment. They ensure that the radiation is targeted directly at the tumor. We cannot tell if the radiation is working during treatment for two main reasons. Radiation can cause inflammation. On imaging scans, this is difficult to distinguish from the cancer. Also, radiation continues to work for several months after treatment stops, so more time is needed to know the full effects of radiation. You will likely have a CT or PET scan two to three months following treatment that will help measure your response to radiation. Radiation side effects vary between patients. You may experience only one or two of the side effects mentioned. Most side effects are temporary and manageable. It is important to communicate changes and concerns to your healthcare team. Someone is always available if you are concerned about a symptom or have a question. We will measure your response to treatment two to three months after you complete radiation. For more information, visit the Learning Center in the main building on the fourth floor. There, you can find additional information about cancer treatments and general health. 
You can also call or go online for more information. We hope that this video has helped prepare you for radiation treatment. If you have questions, ask a member of your healthcare team.